What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this one, we're going to be going over the pretty significant short squeeze that we saw in the market today. Now we've seen a couple of these happen, uh, over the last essentially 20 or so years, but this was one of the largest ones that we have seen market-wide. So there's a lot to break down. There's a lot of insight that we can get from this going forward into what could happen in terms of price action in the overall market over the next couple of days and weeks. And we also have to go over the crazy amounts of data that we had today and what's to come tomorrow. So again, guys, before we get into all of that information, if you do enjoy the information and analysis that I provide for you guys in these videos, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who actually want to learn. And if you guys do want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. So getting right into it over here, let's take a look at some of the data that came out today. I know a lot of you guys have seen this already, but it's always helpful to get a better understanding if those of you guys who may not understand this can actually learn. So looking at the year over year CPI right here, we came in at 7.7%. Uh, year over year increase when the expected number was 7.9. So it was a B on CPI. One of the more important numbers here, though, is along with CPI, we saw the initial jobless claims and continuing claims both come out. Now, we haven't seen a lot of this recently, but the initial jobless claims came in higher than expected. That means that more people in the market are filing for unemployment benefits, showing us that the labor market is slowly starting to soften. Now, we could see the unemployment rate go up similar to what we saw uh, I believe last week, and that could give the Fed the ability to raise interest rates less or slow the pace of rate increases. Now, after this data came out today, there were a couple of key things that we needed to look for. Um, let me refresh this right here to make sure we have the most accurate data right now. So again, this has pretty much stayed unchanged all day after the CPI data came out. But right now, you can see that the current target rate for the federal funds rate is between 375 and 400 basis points. At the December meeting, there was a lot of debate over whether or not we're going to get a 50 basis point rate hike or 75. After the day today, it makes sense that we could be looking towards a 50 basis point rate hike. And going along with a lot of the other comments from uh, Fed, uh, the, the Fed members today that did give speeches, when you think about going down to a 50 basis point rate hike, it's not necessarily a pivot. It's just slowing the pace of rate increases. Can we still get to 500 basis points or 550 basis points as the terminal rate? Yes, we absolutely can. But the inflation data that we saw today was essentially the first step in showing us that things might be starting to get on the right track. Now, looking at this right here, we have an 80.6% probability of a 50 basis point rate hike in December and a 19.4% probability of a 75 basis point rate hike. And we look at what happened on the charts today here on the SPY, on the daily time frame, we are seeing almost a 1348 cross up on this daily time frame here. And I would not be surprised if we ended up getting to that 40162, the 200 EMA on the daily. Now, we're starting to see that RS or the MACD build a little bit of bullish momentum here the rsi cracked above its moving average and above 50 and if we look at this on the four hour here as well well we have this cross up here we had a slight cross down then it crossed right back up closing candles above the 200 macd building that bullish momentum rsi is getting a little hot though so that is definitely something to keep in mind but when you look at this on the five minute chart today that giant candle and that slow melt up throughout the entire day there was a lot of money to be made and as usual i do want to highlight a couple of our members today. Uh, Manthone, 2% on the day. Uh, Netty, 66% on the day. 850% uh, on the day here. 13% on the day. 17% on the day. Also saying 1348 kicks ass. It does. It's the best place to come and learn how to trade, guys. The results speak for themselves. If you guys want access to all of these proprietary trading algorithms, uh, the live streams, the curriculum videos, the alert system, and the special things that we have coming for you guys very, very, very soon, make sure you guys check out that link down below. Low. And taking a look at the dollar over here, absolutely off a cliff today. And same thing with this 10-year treasury yield right here, uh, off an absolute cliff. So we did see a lot of buying in the 10-year treasury bonds today, uh, which could be a sign that some investors are thinking that we might have hit a top in the yields. When you see a lot of people going in to buy these bonds, you are going to see the yield starting to come down. Now, 
I do want to talk briefly here about some of the key things that happened today in terms of the overall squeeze of the market. So CPI missed Spark's third biggest short squeeze ever. Stocks, bonds, gold soar as the dollar crashes. A very, very, very slightly softer than expected core CPI print combined with broadly less hawkish Fed speak sparked the biggest rally in stocks since April 2020 and the biggest collapse in Treasury yields since March of 2020. The massive rally in stocks and bonds sent the 60-40 portfolio uh, up 3.4% uh, today. Since 1998, there have been only seven other sessions when the portfolio jumped more than 3%, all happening during the 2020 and 2008 recessions. Keep in mind, though, that the forward returns after these big rallies have been poor. So CPI stoked the market's rally and Dallas Fed Lori Logan poured gasoline on that fire by signaling the Fed would soon slow the pace of tightening. Now, that's what we went over earlier in this video talking about uh, how we were going to be moving from 75 basis point rate hikes down to 50. This morning, CPI data were a welcome relief, but there is still a long way to go. Now, the bears are going to cling to these statements here, but there's still a long way to go and essentially say, OK, well, even though we're starting to see the the uh, the inflation numbers actually starting to come down in the labor market slowly starting to soften, there is still a very long way to go. Remember, the Fed's inflation target over the long run is about 2%. Well, we're at 7.7. .7. That isn't really showing any signs of getting to where we need to be. Basically echoing the FOMC statement and trying to position herself a little towards Powell's comments, Fed's Harker and Daly also reiterated the same comments, specifically citing the effect of cumulative of tightening, but noting that there is a need to tighten further and that 50 basis points is still a significant rate hike. So what they're essentially saying is, well, the market's pricing in a 50 basis point rate hike, but they don't want the market to start reacting in an absolutely crazy way and start ripping because we are moving down to that 50 basis point rate hike or most likely moving down to 50 basis points uh, sequentially going forward. They need to keep the overall markets in check just in case the data that comes out later actually doesn't look as good as it did over the last few weeks. So if we then see CPI actually going higher or PCE data not showing what the Fed needs to see, well, then we could easily see that probability me uh, measure that we were looking at over here start to balance back out again, and that could lead to the market selling off pretty significantly. So those are things that you have to watch out for here. And again, uh, coming down a little bit further, however, Fed's mester appeared to push back a little, arguing that the risk of tightening too little outweighs the risk of tightening too much. The other thing that we have to look at here is the Fed members aren't agreeing. So there isn't necessarily much credibility to any one of these Fed speakers as they come out and speak. What the market's really going to be bracing for is Powell. So when we get that next Fed meeting and any of the other data points that we are going to be seeing, over the next couple of months here, those are going to be very, very key going into the start of 2023, whether or not we're going to be in this volatile period or if we're going to start to see that light at the end of the tunnel and run back up. Now, the last thing I kind of want to leave you guys with here is as well, this statement, the risk of tightening too little outweighs the risk of tightening too much. Most likely at this point, we're still going to see the Fed over tighten a little bit. Now, if you guys have watched a couple of my videos. There is that TLT trade that I am watching for next year. And I still think it's very much on the table that the Fed is going to try to do everything that they can in order to get rates under control or in, uh, inflation under control by raising rates. But the issue uh, then becomes is if you start to see inflation aggressively starting to come to the downside in a too rapid way, well, then they're going to have to stop raising rates and maybe cut rates maybe in an emergency fashion and that's potentially when we could see that tlt trade start to fire off so that is going to wrap up this video here guys if you did enjoy the information and analysis that i provided for you guys in this video make sure you go down and hit that like button it costs you nothing to do it but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn and if you guys do want to see more videos like this make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time i post a new video so i hope you guys are having a great evening made some money today i'll see you guys in the next one peace